Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I am Danielle, AKA Stitcherista here on YouTube. And today is Monday, March 6th. So it was a really good weekend. I feel like I have a lot to share with you, but then the video is 10 minutes. I don't know. So let's just get started. So first my gratitude list. Wait a minute, I need to pause for a second. Okay, I just had to do one little thing, which I will show you. Um, but my gratitude list for today I have if I can get to the page <laughs> I have six things on there okay number one time spent with mom Charlize and Mackenzie so Mackenzie is my stepdaughter um, yesterday we all went to a designer purse bingo and although we did not win it was a lot of fun um, we were gone. We got there at 1130 in the morning. Well, yes, we got there at 1130 and we didn't get home back to our house until five. Um, it was a good time. I enjoyed the time spent with them very much because, um, I see my stepdaughter once a week because they come over for dinner or lunch, but I don't see my mom and Charlize like that. So, excuse me, anytime I can do that. It's a good time. Um, we also saw Charlize on Saturday because um, Bill it has become sort of her driving instructor. Her learner's permit expires in November and my stepfather and my mom are just, they're having a hard time teaching her how to drive. So Bill is a very good instructor. Uh, he taught my stepdaughter, did all that. So he agreed to help Charlize and we actually went over there on Saturday after we went to the grocery store in Costco and drove around with her for like an hour and a half. And she did really good and she's more comfortable now. And she drove back and forth um, to the bingo uh, yesterday. So she is getting her driving time in. So that's really good. Um, number two, good shows on Amazon Prime. So this goes hand in hand with my next thing on the, my third thing on my gratitude list, nighttime stitching time. So we don't have any children in the house and we don't have any pets. I am so very grateful for the quiet time and the free time that I actually have. Now, I have had more free time this last week because of being on vacation. My boss was on vacation, so I was. And I'm off today. We're working tomorrow and Wednesday so far. But when I really stop and think about it, I have a lot of free time to read, diamond paint, cross stitch. I am very, very grateful for that time that I get every single day. And so last night, I didn't do any stitching or diamond painting over the weekend. I didn't diamond paint past, I think I stitched Friday night maybe. I diamond painted Friday during the, um, the paint with me, but that was it for that. But yeah, so last night, Bill goes to bed at 8 o'clock, and I sat down and stitched for a good two hours and watched, I finished watching a movie that I had seen on there with Joaquin Phoenix, and it's about the true story of, what is the guy's name? John something. He is an alcoholic and he gets in a car accident and he becomes a quadriplegic and he winds up getting clean sober I should say and he winds up becoming a pretty successful cartoon artist but how he gets there it's so good and it you know brings into God higher power I loved the movie. It was so good. So I finished watching that last night. And then Jill was talking about a show that she had watched on Amazon Prime called Daisy and Daisy and the Six. I think that's what it's called. It's based on a book. She didn't read the book. I didn't read the book either. But it's about this band. And they do interviews in the beginning. Like the interviews are set in the 90s, but the band was back in the 70s. 
and I watched the trailer and it looked really good and I'm on the second there's only three episodes out so far so they must be releasing one a week maybe it's good I really like it and I'm, I'm so grateful when I can find shows like that that I can really watch because I really take my time stitching to enjoy it and make sure my threads are laid nice and neat and everything it was a very enjoyable stitching session last night so here's what I got done I'm gonna turn it sideways because you guys can see it better I am on the next like section this is the end of the page down here so I decided to stitch the line down there and then if you can see I stitched all of this and you know I'm stitching this on 28 count Lugana with two strands and you can see especially with the black you can see the fabric behind it now I am not someone that has ever washed their fabric after I've stitched I've always just framed it I read something in one of the groups this weekend and I've read it a few times and it just never really stuck in my head someone said if you wash your piece and then iron it your stitches will fluff up and you won't see that is that true has anyone really done that I'm curious I've never done it I think I'm gonna wash this though at the end when I'm done stitching and see but yeah I love my progress I think it looks so good I absolutely love Carolyn Manning designs so much and I'm enjoying stitching on that very much okay number four on my list is Bill um, he did my frame for Queen of Hearts so he wanted something to do I wasn't going to order the magnetic frame and the eyeglass chain until oh god okay nothing broke um but I ordered he wanted something to do this weekend especially since we were at the bingo for all those hours so I bought the Krylon Glitter Blast Ruby Paint because I wanted the frame red. The eyeglass chain and then I had my magnet. So I'm going to show you. <gasps> right? So we painted the frame because this was the color of the frame that I had bought. This was the color. He painted it. It's so glittery. Now, he didn't add, remember, Bill adds magnets into it. He didn't add magnets onto the bottom. This is the bottom piece. Wait a minute, let me snap that together. He added magnets on the top. He drilled holes in, and I have plenty of these magnets from making needle minders. He drilled extra holes and added, so he added one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He added four more magnets. So he did that and he painted it and he added, what the hell just happened there? Okay, wait a minute. I mean, I'm having trouble here. Give me one second. Okay, did I hook that one? No. I'm going to show you what I'm having trouble with, but I'm, I'm getting it. Just, just give me one second. Oh, get on there. Come on. Let me pause. Okay. I buy eyeglass chains off of eBay, eBay, nope, <laughs> off of Amazon. You know, the ones you can put on a pair of eyeglasses so if you want to take them down, they'll hang. So I bought, I wanted it to match. I bought this one. It's so pretty. I think it was $6, $9, something like that. So what Bill did was he put eyelets in the top. So this will be the top where, we, where I hang it. And um, what I was fooling with was the clasp on this is like a necklace, cl a lobster clasp almost, and it wasn't clipping around there. But yeah, so good, so cool. So I am already, 
and that has to go that way all ready for the diamond painting so i need to put that away but he is so handy dandy with stuff like that and so i'm so grateful for that because the one thing I have come up against in looking for these magnetic frames is finding colored ones. I found the teal one. You see that one back there, but they make like teal, white, black, teak wood. That's it. I like color. So we're spray painting it. Okay, so number five on my list is a new hair straightener. I got a new hair straightener. I've had it for a while and I haven't used it and I used it and I really like because I like having more of a wave like this than the kinky curly stuff that happens if I curl it with a curling iron. And so I really like how my hair turned out yesterday and today with it. So I'm very pleased with that hair straightener. And then number six on the list is dinner in the crock pot. So yesterday we bought a pork shoulder at the grocery store and Bill cut it all up yesterday and I put everything in the crock pot. We're having that for dinner. So it's so good. The seasoning packet from McCormick's for Slow cooker, barbecue pork, it's so good. Okay, so I received, speaking of framing, I received a very interesting email this morning. Now, I receive a lot of emails every week that people that wanna sponsor the channel, but it's things like video, it's things that don't pertain to the channel. And I have to really love the product, love the service to be able to do it. So most, nine times out of 10, I don't, take any of those offers. I received a, an email this morning from a custom framing company that I have used in the past. I have, cause when I was first diamond painting, besides my partials that I put in a portfolio, I literally bought a custom frame for every single diamond painting that I did. Pricey, very pricey. So, but, since starting back diamond painting, my whole thinking about that has changed. And from what I've seen in the diamond painting community, it's changed too with downsizing, selling stuff, getting rid of stuff, and not trying not to spend a ton of money on things like that, hence the magnetic frames. So the email I received says, wait a minute. Okay, the email I received I wanted to reach out as our team believes our mission and voice align and we could make a great team. We would love to send you some frames to display your diamond paintings and hopes you could feature them in one of your upcoming YouTube videos. We have a few ideas for collaboration and would like to see if you were interested. Above all, we would love to establish and grow a mutually beneficial relationship. We're open to ideas and suggestions to ensure any collaboration now or in the future is the perfect fit. And immediately I said, you know what? I'm gonna tell them my story, my diamond painting journey from custom framing to using magnetic frames. So here is what I said. My, my email was very long. I'm gonna read it to you. I said, thanks so much for reaching out. I would like to explain to you my thought process and how I frame my diamond paintings now and what I have seen in the various Facebook groups I belong to regarding diamond painting. Because you guys know that I read a lot in the groups and I take notes, I, I really do. I said, I started diamond painting in 2019. I bought custom frames for everything, not cheap. As you know, a custom frame plus foam core and shipping can work out to quite a lot of money. I lost interest in diamond painting for over an entire year and I just started back diamond painting in December of last year. But my thought process is different. I cleaned out tons of craft supplies I had and donated or sold a lot. And now I am very cautious about what I buy, which includes frames. My stepdaughter moved in with her boyfriend and my husband turned her bedroom into my craft room now where I diamond paint. But I kept seeing in the many Facebook groups that people were using magnetic frames to hang their diamond paintings like this one. And I linked the one I just bought from Amazon so they could look at it. And when I completed my first diamond painting just last month, you know, since starting back, I used this method of framing and absolutely loved it. First off, much cheaper than a custom frame. And I can switch out diamond paintings when I run out of wall space or just want to see a different one up on the wall. Many people in the diamond painting community cannot afford custom framing and many diamond paintings are large, like 20 by 30 and some even bigger. All of that to say thank you so much for your offer, but I will have to decline 
as I don't plan on using custom frames any longer for my diamond paintings. I don't. I really don't. I plan on using the magnetic frames. But I did say this. I don't know if you are able to offer or manufacture the magnetic frames, but I know one thing I have come up against is finding them in different colors. My husband just painted one red for me because the diamond painting I'm currently working on is Queen of Hearts, and I wanted a red frame, but I couldn't find a magnetic one in red. And as the hanger, I purchased a beaded eyeglass chain. So all told, I spent about $30 because the frame was like 21 plus the eyeglass chain was nine to frame a diamond painting that is 23 by 27. A custom frame that size would have cost much, much more. And actually, I said, I actually just went on your site and I did right then when I was compiling the email and put in those measurements and for a basic black frame with shipping, it would have cost $92.99 to frame that diamond painting. That's significant difference, $30 to $93, right? I said, more often than not in the diamond painting community, people are looking for cheaper alternatives to frame these paintings. Some people obviously do order custom frames, but many more do not, at least in my opinion. And they wrote me back. They wrote me back pretty quickly. And they said, thanks so much for taking the time to explain your process and give us a deeper look into the needs and wants of the diamond painting community. We totally understand how custom framing can be expensive, especially if you're creating new artwork to frame on a regular basis. There are people that do these diamond paintings in days. She says, I will pass on your message to our team in hopes that maybe one day soon we can offer magnetic frames as we are always looking to connect with the crafting and arts community. Thank you again and have a great week. And you know what? I'm so glad I explained and sent that email back instead of just ignoring it because that's innovation. That is how things are invented in the communities. That is how things are invented in crafting. This may start a whole movement. You don't know. They may, she may go back to her team and they start making magnetic frames and they make them in a bunch of different colors. Really? You just don't know what's going to come of that. So I'm so glad that I did that. And so glad that they read that and listened and wrote me back. Okay. So Friday, Oh, by the way, I finished a book. I started a new book yesterday, new, the new Kirsten Moglen book called Don't Go Down There. Oh my, oh my, my. The book is fairly short. It's only about 169 pages. I'm already like on page 30. Yes. Okay. So the last thing I want to share with you, I received a kit from Diamond Art Club that I need to sneak peek for this Friday by UPS, but I also received another package. This big styrofoam container comes and it's from Nix's Notions. Now, you guys know I've ordered a bunch of putty from Nix's Notions, love the putty. The putty is the best putty I've ever used. It smells amazing. I don't have residue on my diamonds, love it. And I'm like, I didn't order anything from there. And this is a big container. Like it looked like one of those Styrofoam containers that you would um, get like a big mug in or something. I mean, it was big. So I open it up and I see all this stuff wrapped up in tissue paper and a lovely card. So now this is from Nick's Dark Sky. That is her YouTube handle, her Instagram handle. She says, hi, Danielle. I hope you're having a lovely day today. This is just a little something I had an extra set of and I thought you might like. It's my small way of showing my appreciation and gratitude for your thoughtfulness and kindness. Have a very blessed and beautiful day. And when I opened up the package, wait till you see. She sent me a whole bunch of trays, all the different sizes that she makes. And I'm gonna keep them. There's an empty shelf over here. You guys can't see it. I'm going to keep the trays on there because I don't have anywhere else to put them. And I want to use them when I have a diamond painting that has a big block of color because wait till you see these. Now, I also want to say, okay, this is called the submarine. That They're all in this blue color. This is called the submarine because you can see it looks like a submarine. And then the little stopper comes right out. What I want to say about her trays, why they are my favorite trays. 
I have ordered over my diamond painting career a lot of items that have been 3D printed. A lot of the items that come 3D printed. Now, I don't know what's involved in 3D printing. I've never done it. I don't own it. Sometimes you get stuff and there's rough edges. There's rough edges. There's, um, you know, imperfections in it. These perfectly smooth to the touch and no imperfections. So I don't know. My husband said that she must have a really good 3D printer. I don't know how he knows that, but yeah. It's very, very smooth. It is the smoothest of anything that I've ever bought 3D printed. Okay, so there's the submarine. Lots of space. Then she, and mind you, on the other side, the Nix's Notions is in there. This is the Venti. This is a big tray. Again, slips out, goes right back in. A lovely large tray. And of course she also sent, this is the regular size tray that she has. And there's no name on that, but that is like the one that I love that she sent free with the putty um, that I use all the time in doing that diamond painting over there. Yeah, so she sent another one of those. This one is called the Tall Boy, which I love that. Look how tall that is. Okay, this is in like a gray. It looks blue, but it's like a blue gray. But again, the stopper comes out. It goes right back in very easy. Now this one is so large. I have never seen a diamond painting tray this big. This one's called Goliath and you're gonna see why. Look how big this is. Ooh, that is a big boy. That is a large tray. And then again, the stopper comes out, comes back in. It does go back in. Go back in there. Why is it not going back in there? There it went. Yeah, Goliath. Giant. And I was trying to think, there is like that one Diamond Art Club, the Forest Sprite, where there's a lot of white in the background. I would definitely use something like this for that. One of these trays for sure. Then she sent two that have lids. This one is called Gremlin. This just right out, you can slide the lid off. This is for if you have kids or pets. And because if this is knocked over, it's not coming off. Like if this is knocked onto the floor, you're not going to lose your diamonds. So yeah, it's called the Gremlin. And then she sent one more, which is even bigger. This is called The Beast. I love the names. I love the names so much. Now, she had put a piece of paper in there. Initially, this was very hard to get out. The It's still not, it's still not easy. Oh, and that's because I didn't have the tray pushed all the way. It lifts right up. It does lift up because I got it out. I meant. It does lift up, I promise you, because I got it out. It's like the tray, the, the lid is, you gotta like hold the lid. It wants to catch on the lid. Oh, I'm so stupid. It, how does that come out? Okay, you can see how it's in there. See how that's in there? It actually, you have to pull it out. Oh, it did slide up, but I don't know why it would not slide up without, I don't know what I was doing wrong with that, but it will slide up. So you put the tray back, this, the, the lid back in it. And you can see this has like a little lip on it and it fits pretty tight in there. I can't get it back in there now. 
Do I need to do it the other way? No. Maybe she can explain in the comments, what am I doing wrong here? Because I don't think it goes that way, does it? No. Yeah, it's almost like it's supposed to be a stopper, but you have to like squeeze it in there. I feel like I'm doing something incorrect though. But the tray is amazing. The tray is gorgeous. It's, seri it's seriously, utterly gorgeous for sure. And I don't have kids or pets in my house, so I, um, fits very nicely on there. But yeah, the stopper, I'm not sure what I'm doing wrong here. I did get it back in there. You gotta like push it in. This one is not one that slides up. You have to push it in. And it really, I think because, you know, some of these other ones that just, see, this one just slides up. And it stays. It definitely stays. But for this one, I guess you want to do a different kind of little button. But the, thank you so much. Those trays are amazing. And she also sent a thing of putty. That's what I just dropped in the beginning of this video. This one is called Valley of the Sands. And can you even with the case? I mean, look at that. So when I, it smells like a men's cologne. It smells so good. I could literally just sit there and smell it. And it's gold. Can you see the gold color? And what's awesome, and I probably threw this away by accident when I bought my other putty. She gives you a little scoop. I just take the edge of my pen and scrape it out. But she gives you this little metal scoop. Look how cute that is. <laughs> little metal scoop to scoop out some putty and then get it into your pen. So I'm saving that this time because I, I'm telling you, I must have thrown it away before. But thank you so much for all of this. I was so surprised and pleased. Okay, I will link her um, Etsy store down below. That's all I have, guys. And that was 27 minutes. That was a lot, right? I hope you guys all had a good weekend and you're having a good Monday. As always, if you have any questions, please leave them in the comment section below and I will answer them to the best of my ability. Thank you so much for watching and subscribing, and I will see you in my next video. Bye, guys.